Greetings ladies and gentlemen, Jeremy Adrian here. Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is a review and recollection of my month spent leveling from level 1 to the cap on Tryon's MMORPG Rift, or more specifically, its subscription-only Rift Prime server. This entire experience was in fact my first deep dive into Rift regardless of version, having never played the original long enough to establish any sort of tangible memory to form a conclusive opinion about what's good and what's bad about the game. For the uninitiated, what is Rift and how did we arrive to today, having two versions of the same game under different payment models? Rift was developed and published by Tryon Worlds back in 2011 and launched as a subscription-only game, back in a time when some models were still popular. The game setting takes place in the fantasy world of Talara, with two competing factions, the Guardians and Defiance, staking their claim for supremacy. Players picked a faction to represent, each having a decent selection of races and classes before journeying through the world and progressing their characters through main story quests, side quests, dungeons, raids, and landscape content called Rifts, which for its time set the bar in terms of how epic organic landscape content could be. By January 2012, Tryon announced that 1 million players had bought the game, and Rift earned a total of $100 million in revenue that calendar year. And that's the last piece of good news the game will have for quite some time. The years that followed, the MMORPG genre was going through an evolution. Many MMOs opted for free-to-play models, the buy-to-play model was also rising in popularity, with games like Guild Wars 2 coming out and leading the way. The environment called for existing games other than World of Warcraft to keep up, and Rift struggled in that department, as it bled players slowly before finally resorting to a free-to-play model themselves. What didn't help the game is Tryon's monetization ideas and the handling of the in-game cash door that many point to as a catalyst for the game's initial downfall in recent years, which then led to some folk calling this a dead game, which you may have seen YouTube videos of. Thus, we arrived to January 2018 when Tryon Worlds made a pretty big announcement. The studio was going to launch a new fresh start progression server called Rift Prime. Prime was going to do things differently, such as remove a lot of the problematic, advantageous items players could buy in the cash store on the live version, and just focusing on the content which on paper would attract both old and new players to Rift to see what the game had to offer today's generation of MMO players. There is a catch though, it is a subscription only server costing 15 bucks a month. It is here that my story begins with Rift Prime, as I knew this would be a great opportunity to assess the game when its popularity is at a peak, in addition to reviewing the game's core systems from a new player perspective. Still with me? If so, then let me attempt to share my opinion of whether or not this pay-to-play version of Rift is worth the money for new players, with a key different section between the two games toward the end of the video. Let's begin with Rift's world building and talk about the setting and the story as much of what you'll do as a player in this MMO is centered around your faction's narrative. What attracted me to Rift the first time around back in 2013 was the setting and the story. I was playing Lotro at the time, which is an established IP and had a source material, so naturally I was curious to check out another MMO's original setting and story. The Rift world of Talara is centered around the Mathosian Civil War, when a disastrous event begins opening rifts between Talara and the plains which allowed the old enemy, Regulus and his minions to stir chaos in the world. Talara's gods were powerless in all of this, and the citizens of Talara split into two factions, the Guardians and the Defiance, with each believing believing that they are going to save the world via their different methods and approaches. That is the scene setter for new players, and your choice of which faction to play as offers some good lore that builds throughout the game. Guardians are very much by the book, while Defiants are more interested in science and technology. I leveled both factions on Prime and have to say there isn't a superior faction. Both of them are really well fleshed out with well-written main characters that show up throughout your adventures and a faction main hub that's unique to each. There are also B faction unique mounts and other collectibles that are exclusive to that faction, but nothing you're missing out on. Besides that, the beginning sequence of tutorials and starter areas for each faction is also uniquely different, but in later levels both factions will converge on the same maps and can in fact play together across content types to fill up group numbers. 
Speaking of maps, Talara is pretty big, filled with really nice biomes of zones that will ensure that you see a variety of environments from the dry hot sands of the Drotlands to the chilly mountain ranges of the Iron Pine Peak with a splash of everything else in between. Zones are guided by level ranges so you know when and where is the best place to move on to next. Each zone for the two factions aren't just placeholders for XP gains, they do have their own zone stories to complement the main story quests that will take you through them chronologically which is pretty fun. And as of July, Rift has opened up the Ember Isle level 50 zone for players to quest and explore in as well. While it's been fun making my way through the zones, you can't help but feel how it must be like for veteran players having done all of this before with no newer zones or alternate offerings being added specifically for the Prime server. From a story perspective, traditional MMO story hunters will appreciate the emphasis on the written word with large amounts of quest text to chew through with accompanying small doses of voice dialogues and cinematics. It's old, Rift, and in some ways it lags behind modern day MMOs that handle cinematic storytelling really well, but I enjoyed the story of both factions a lot, so keep that in mind, your mileage may vary here. The reason Rift is considered a unique MMORPG back in the day was due to the class system in-game. Rift and its prime server lets players pick from the warrior, rogue, mage, and cleric base archetypes, but the ability to customize each build with a different soul or talent trees to suit a role is what makes them stand out. Each class will have a bunch of souls that allows players to alter playstyles and create experimental or cookie cutter builds depending on situation. This also means that all classes have the potential to do anything in game if you know what you're doing. These souls are also a form of progression as you pick one to begin with at character creation and must grind your way to unlocking more powerful ones in the prime server. On the live version, you can have instant access to it if you buy them on the cash store. For the purpose of this review, I rolled a cleric and made my way to the level cap with it, unlocking the better souls along the way, and I will say that as a new player, sticking to a soul the entire game isn't impossible, but will be boring as hell, and you will want to mix it up a little bit, especially if you want to give group content a go. The game's dungeons are harder and take longer to complete on Prime, and does focus on making sure the group has the best possible setup to succeed from the LFG itself, meaning traditional trinity applies here, with tanks, heals, support, and two DPS classes all playing important roles. Again, each base class can fill those roles if you have the souls. Back when I was playing, there was only two allocated character slots on Prime, which is an odd restriction put in place to make the community rely on one another for crafting. But the game has since added another character slot, so you'll be able to at least play three out of the four classes available. Now, based on my experiences in that one month, these souls are the best part about classes and also the game's impending downfall due to Tryon's ever tinkering with class balance. My experiences in group content has been a bumpy ride as classes at time of playing were always expected to roll the overpowered souls from overpowered classes as opposed to letting players play what they want and what they feel is necessary and viable from their chosen classes to run that content. Which is what I suspect was the main attraction of the soul system in the first place. Those of us on Prime these past few months will tell you, at one point, warriors were the go-to for everything, and then mages took over both healing and DPS, outperforming all classes and souls across the board, while rogues were a close second. You get the point. With the amount of souls available in-game, the limitation on character slots, and the mindset of the community at the time had a bias towards preferring OP builds, it was hard for new players to get engaged with their original choice of class and soul, if and when it ends up on the wrong side of the nerf bat. And because leveling is a lot slower on Prime with the lower XP gains and level cap, this caused a major burnout for me, and I just stopped running content altogether with my cleric instead of leveling a new flavor of the month class. Why is balance such a pain in the ass for Tryon with Rift? A quick browse on the forums has a lot of the answers, with the devs apparently worrying about touching classes and how that affects PvP in addition to PvE. The debate can go on, but Rift's class balancing is one of those things that just takes the focus away from a lot of the good that the game offers. Classes aside, what about the combat system? 
I said it a few times on my leveling streams that Rift felt like it was the last torchbearer of the traditional MMORPG. It felt like the game that was bridging the gap between the classic MMO combat systems of the previous decade to this. Both versions of Rift used the same combat system. Tap targeting, hotbar skill firing with a global cooldown on almost all of your skills, bar a few buffs and solitary skills. The pace of the combat is going to be really slow, especially if you're coming to Rift from MMOs that have more modern combat systems. Depending on your souls, a lot of skills go off in sequence and are reliant on each other, which makes sense for the slower pace as it gives players time to assess fights and learn their rotations and build over time. There's also a bunch of skills available for each class and soul which does cause clutter and bloat and for the two classes that I played, you'll only use the optimal few over the large amount that you get. Rift is also one of those games that lets players reduce the skill bloat and up their efficiency with its macro system. You can create custom macros account wide and it's really handy for end gamers and dungeons or raid runners to save multiple macros for the soul still use and based on experience and observation, Rift, both versions, are incredibly reliant on macros which is either a good thing or a bad thing for you. Combat animations however, definitely didn't age well when you combine the slow pace with repetitive thumping a mob on the head over and over with the same few skills at the early levels it does make you wonder when does it get better but it gets better worry not let's tackle content now and go over what prime offers for pve and pvp Due to Rift's narrative-driven nature, I'm happy to report that the game has loads of questing via traditional hub crawls through the game's zones that are just great, both serving up a diverse mix of conventional zone-building stuff leading up to a zone dungeon, in between the usual fetch, kill, and escort stuff. Things as basic as side quests are very well written and ties into the narrative of the town that you're currently in, which on a larger scale ties into the zone story of why that town is a necessary stronghold to combat the enemy's fortress just over the ridge, for example. It's a cohesive experience and more importantly, worth doing as XP comes slowly on Prime. In between running the accidentally produced main story quest chain involving your faction and the side quests, there's also carnage quests out on the landscape that triggers whenever you kill a monster or mob, and these involve killing a bunch more for quick XP. Carnage quests appear in most zones even in areas belonging to the opposite faction, but you can travel there regardless and get them done anyway. The best landscape content, in my opinion though, are the things the game is named after, rifts. From the first zone till the last, minor and major rifts appear on the landscape and players all over, near and far, flock toward it to take part in this organic landscape group content and it happens so seamlessly. Depending on the type of rift, monsters spew out of it in waves and all nearby players work together to take them down until the last wave or the boss wave appears. Nearby players have the option to join a group at the click of a button, which is awesome, and rewards are based on the difficulty and participation. The types of rifts varies as well, and some have varying objectives so it isn't all about killing. Most zones have precursor events or invasions that start off with closing rifts across the zone before a big boss spawns and everyone zerks the hell out of it. This has been the most fun thing I've done in an MMO for a while when it comes to organic landscape group content since Guild Wars 2's map meta events or world bosses. It has that similar effect and skill. And because Rift Prime was fairly new when I jumped in for the review, you literally had hundreds upon hundreds of players in the area taking part and it's pretty awesome to watch. At the end game, you will want to run them too as they do drop important currency like Planarite and Void Stones that will be used to barter for gear, class souls, and more. So it's also a way to get players to rerun the older landscape content. Elite Raid Rifts are also another form of endgame content, and all in all, Rifts are one of the best things about the game, hands down, both versions, though again, difficulty is a lot harder on Prime. For traditional group content, there are a few dungeons and raids to run as well. Dungeons first appear when you hit the appropriate level, and what I like about them is the difficulty on Prime. They're pretty well designed in terms of having a start, a middle, and an end, with a good story chain for each, multiple boss fights, and trash mobs that will kill you if you're not letting the tank tank. While leveling, these are good for blue gear drops and a good place to practice your souls as well for later levels. It relies on a strict composition too, and you have to queue on the LFG with the roll available for your class, so if you don't have a support soul unlock, for example, it won't allow you to queue as a support. 
Dungeons aren't going to be quick too, with the fastest pug run I did taking up to 45 minutes for a full clear, trash mobs and all. So don't queue for one unless you're absolutely sure you've got time to burn. At the cap of 50, harder difficulty of the same dungeons also become available and it's a good way for aspiring raiders to get the basic starter gear for later content. Rounding that up are the raids themselves, which I am in no position to talk about considering I left the game before getting geared for one. But speaking to my guildmates that do raid, they share the same sentiment. Raids are brutal and have an old school World of Warcraft vibe about them. It takes weeks and weeks to get the gear and slowly chip away at boss mechanics which does offer that nostalgic fun. But that's where the praise ends. From what I can gather about returning Plurish's opinion about the content in Prime, it's the same as it's been on live for years, except the harder difficulty and slower progression. So, in a way, it's disappointing in that regard. There's nothing really new considering it's 15 bucks a month to play on Prime. On the PvP side of things, Rift offers battlegrounds called Warfronts, where teams of two, regardless of faction, battle it out in a few arena modes, from capturing points in the Codex to holding relics in the library of the Rune Masters or in the classic Black Garden. Again, there's nothing new, and from my time playing Rift back in 2013, Warfronts were a pretty good way to level up and gain XP, but that's not really the case on Prime. At least players can still earn XP from it while leveling. The same modes appear again at level cap, and this time, your enjoyment of PvP will come down to where your class is at balance-wise. It's still a fun time though, and I do like Rift's Warfronts quite a bit, and it's an alternative way to get gear using PvP currency as well. With content out of the way, let's talk progression and discuss what ways there are for players to grow their characters. Character progression is standard, with players earning XP via quests, dungeons, PvP, landscape content, and things like that, all the way to level 50, which is the prime cap, while on live, the cap is at level 70. Gear progression will be important to tackle appropriately leveled zones while leveling, and I found quest drops and dungeon drops to be sufficient enough, and at the level cap, the hunt for better gear begins. There are many ways to gear your character on Prime. You can either run the same dungeons on the harder difficulty for RNG drops, or buy stuff in the auction house, barter for them using the boatload of currencies you get, or craft what you need. The RNG nature of dungeon loot drops, in addition to having to roll for the gear in group content, will probably be the reason why gearing will take some time if you're doing it that way. Other post-cap progression involves reputation grinds via dailies, dungeons, and even PvP, and Rift does have quite a few factions and stables that you'll want to earn max rep with. Travel is done very quick waypoints for convenience, but also with ground mounts, and that is also a collection progression in itself. Not to mention, Cosmetics and Rift's cosmetic system known as the Wardrobe is actually rather impressive, considering skins are account-wide unlocks alongside dyes, and customizing your look is super easy on the go. Artifacts are another form of progression that both versions have, and these are absolutely tedious to do in my opinion, and I found no reason to go hunting for tiny artifacts in the landscape. Getting a full collection usually leads to some beneficial rewards, but they are time-consuming. Rounding things up are achievements, and there's a bunch out there to do for achievement points that, unlike modern MMOs that let you claim rewards for, in Rift's case, it's just personal satisfaction. And that's the bulk of my review, but there's more to dissect here. For new players wondering, here's some of the key things that the live version has that Prime doesn't. Firstly are instant adventures. IA on live is a great piece of content for leveling alts and characters. Queuing for one will place you in a random instant adventure with a group of players or friends. These involve many different kinds of quests, and some are specific to the instant adventures. You may be asked to defend a wardstone from invaders, defeat powerful creatures, or even have to defend the zone from a zone event, as well as many normal quests that have been expanded to incorporate a large amount of players. The difficulty on these quests will actually scale with the amount of players in the group. I've done this a couple of times in live, and they're actually really, really fun, gives good XP, and breaks the questing monotony that new players will eventually experience on Prime because it takes so long to get to level cap. Not having this on Prime is a big loss in my opinion, but that's the whole shtick that Prime is going for anyway. Less new content, harder XP gains. The biggest key difference is obviously going to be the in-game store. Rift Prime's promise was to get rid of loot boxes and pay-to-win items, buffs and boosts, and in that regard, the Prime server kept their word but at a cost. 
you pay 15 bucks a month to fix a core issue that Tryon themselves started. Because on the live version, the direct monetization of endgame items in the store, in addition to the things that you can buy for real money, is shocking. And a far cry from the rift of yonder years that I remember. Other differences we've already talked about, like the level cap, XP gain rates, and content, with the live version having the upper hand since it has the newer expansions and group content, while Prime will take some time to catch up. So to wrap up my new player review, I actually have questions as well as answers. Why was the Prime server necessary? It's definitely banking on nostalgia, offering a gateway for former Rift players to replay the early content, while the hype ensured that the feeling is multiplied due to the surge in population. But because it's not a new build, nor is it a classic build as it uses newer souls on live, was this fresh start progression server just a facade to see if the game could still make money by virtue of being a popular title back in the day? In other words, was this a cash grab? Don't get me wrong, there's plenty I like about Rift, both on Live and on Prime considering I've played both for the review this year, but the latter's 15 bucks a month asking price for reused content that takes a while to be re-released for an already dwindling player base is a poor proposition six months in. As far as fresh start progression servers like these go, my two cents is you can't recapture magic in a bottle. You just can't. You cannot recapture lightning in a bottle twice, especially with MMORPGs. What made the game so special at launch or during its heyday is a thing of the past, and Rift and Tryon will have to drastically do something different or new to captivate players again. If you haven't checked out Rift's Prime server and are wondering if Rift Prime is worth playing with that price tag, at this point, with the Prime server being halfway through its supposedly one-year lifespan, I think the better option is to play the live version for free to see if the core game is worth investing in the first place, provided you can stomach what's in the cash store, which may not affect you at all. And that concludes my thoughts on Rift Prime from a new player perspective. If you have played or are currently playing on Prime, feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section below. Hit the like button for the love of MMOs and do subscribe to the channel for more MMO reviews. I appreciate the support. Once again, I'm Jerem Adrian and I thank you for watching. Roses are red, violets are blue. If you want to watch more videos, click on these cards, anyone would do. And if you want to watch more videos, subscribe to the channel with the button down here. I know you want to.